Hi, I'm Sam from Needcraft and today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful oval lampshade from one of our lampshade making kits. So the oval itself is quite an unusual shape but really useful in the home and this can be used as you can see here either as a table lamp or it can also be used as a pendant lamp. So we have three different sizes of these, a 20 centimetre diameter, 30 centimetre diameter and 40 centimetre diameter. I'm going to be showing you how to make up the 30 centimetre today, but these would work really well over a dining table or the smaller one in a, in a corner of a home where you just really want some extra light and something quite different. So in terms of coverings, you can use any woven fabric. So that means really what you can do with these is make them completely bespoke and add your own personality. And I've got a pile here of lovely fabrics just to give you some ideas of the kind of things that you can use. So any woven will work with this. So you can choose a pattern or colour or design that's really going to suit your home. So let's have a little look and see what's in our box. So first of all we have our rings, we have a plain ring here and these are epoxy coated in white and then we also have our utility ring and as you'll see in the section in the centre here um, it's got a wider hole and then a smaller hole with an adapter. So the smaller hole is for the UK B22 fitting and this is something that you'll commonly see around your home. And then we have this one, which is a European fitting, which you can see is slightly wider. And that's the outer ring here. So this centre part just simply pops out. So you've got the adapter for the two different fittings. We also have our lampshade making PVC, and that's handily rolled up for you. I'm just going to show you the one I've got here that's on the table. Let's pop those to one side. So... The lampshade making PVC, it's professional quality, high grade um, and what, exactly what you'd expect to see on a lampshade on the high street. Um, it's anti-static and anti-yellowing, it's passed lighting association labs testing but most importantly it's fire resistant so that means you're guaranteed that this is safe to use as part of the product. So just before I start talking about the back, um, you can see here that there's a groove and that's called a kiss cut and that kiss cut is already um, made for you and we're actually going to take this section of the PVC away at a later stage. So that's done. On the back you'll see you've got grid lines and those grid lines are basically there for cutting. This is all cut for you so you don't need to really worry about that section. Um, all measured out, you don't even need a tape measure for this. Um, and what this is sticky back, so we're actually going to be peeling this paper off shortly. So what else is in the box? We've got some double-sided tape, and this is a high-tack tape. It's super flexible. It's also transparent, which is important when we get to the later stages, and it has a red um, covering on it, so like a red backing. So the tape itself is actually clear, but high-tack, and that's going to help us hold our shade together. We've also got our finishing tool, and this has a point at the top, two long sides, and a serrated edge. So we're going to use that to get this beautiful professional finish around the top and bottom of our shades at the end. So we also have our instruction sheet, and this is a photo tutorial instruction sheet. It gives you all the hints and tips you'll need to make up your shade. So let's move on to making up our shade now. So just a quick word on fabrics before we get started. You'll see here that I've got a lovely lightweight craft cotton. Um, you can use a medium weight upholstery cotton as well, anything in between. Um, I wouldn't use a stretch fabric purely because the stretch doesn't work well with the sticky back which is on the back of your panel and it will just stretch out of shape and it won't look as professional as you want it to. So woven fabrics are best for this product. 
So we're just going to line our PVC panel up. We want our fabric with the right side down, so we're working on the wrong side. And we want the peel back paper of the PVC panel to also be facing down. So we're just going to line this up and I'm just going to have a quick look at my pattern on here and find a point where I'm happy that that's all nicely lined up. That's great, that's just where I want it to be. And we're simply going to peel back around about five to 10 centimeters of the backing paper. And we're going to position that down onto our fabric and push that down. And that's kind of our anchor point now. Just using my fist there just to smooth it down. And then by lifting up the rest of the PVC panel and we just simply pull away and push down into place. And the same again, just pull away. And each time, five to 10 centimetres, if you feel a bit more confident, you can pull a little bit further away and just push down. And keep pushing that into place. And there we go. And just before we go any further, I'm just going to flip that over. And I just like to check from the front side that there's no fabric catches caught underneath any phrase or anything that might have been on the table. There we go. And just to let you know, the tools that you're going to need to um, make your lampshade up are really quite simple. So we've just got a pair of fabric scissors or alternatively, you could use a craft knife. If you do use a craft knife, don't forget to put um, a cutting mat or something similar on your tabletop. And we've also got a seam roller and the seam roller can be uh, used for sealing the seams at the end. You might have this maybe for card making or even for wallpapering at home. It's optional but it is a really useful tool. And then we've just got a pencil as well. So just going to move on to cutting this out now. So I'm going to use my fabric scissors and we're simply just going to cut along the edge of the PVC and start at the short edge. I think it always just helps you get your eye in and we're just using the edge of the PVC as a guide. So keep moving the scissors along. If you open them nice and wide, you make some long, nice long strokes. Don't worry if this edge isn't super neat because we're not going to see it anyway. And then just to do this short edge. There we go. So we're now at the stage where we are going to take away our kiss cut. So you remember I mentioned this, this is the section that's been cut into the panel for us. And all we need to do is just pop that open and that's coming open really easily. And then just gently do the same on the other side. So you're just bending that back. And then to remove this, all I do is push the main panel down and lift up the margin and that just comes away nicely. So just slowly peeling away, you can see there's some little frays coming off that. We're just going to detach those as we go along. And the frays don't matter too much, but you don't want too many. So just pull that away. And then Flip the panel over and do exactly the same, pushing down and lifting up. There we go. 
again. And then what I'm just going to do before we go any further is I'm just going to take off those frays so they don't get caught up. So before we finish with our panel, we're just going to take our double-sided tape. I'm just going to snip the end off. And we just need to run a section of tape on the PVC just down the short edge. And just snip that when we reach the fabric. So this shouldn't be touching the fabric at all, just staying on the PVC. So we're done with our panel now. So I'm just going to pop that to one side and now we're going to get to work on our rings. So taking the rings, before we start covering them with tape, which is what we're going to do next, we just need to make a mark. So where the epoxy has joined, there may be a mark already, but just to make that a little bit bigger, what we want to do is line up our rings so that they're matching. And then I'm just going to draw that mark in with a pencil so it's in exactly the same place. And you'll understand why when I get to that stage. We're taking our tape again and we're just going to apply it to the rings. And what we're aiming to do here, and I'm just going to start just beyond my mark, and I'll get started so I can show you, is we're looking to have the ring running through the centre of the tape, so sort of equidistant from each edge of the tape. So just, I'm going to move round, round about five centimetres at a time. And if it's not right, just peel it back and do it again. And when you get to the point where the two tapes are meeting, you just need to simply cut away. I leave a little gap, so you see a little patch of white shining through. And what that means is that when you're looking for the end of your tape, you can find it nice and quickly. And also, if the tapes overlap, it can sometimes be quite difficult to take that backing off. So this part's quite important. We're just going to take our fingers and our thumbs, and we're just simply going to push the tape around the ring. This is why the tape is really flexible. And what we're doing with this is we're coating the ring with as much tape as possible to make it super sticky because this is going to hold the whole of the lampshade together till we're back where we started. And then we're just going to repeat that process for the utility ring. So just after the marker there, I'm just going to position my tape on. And again, looking for the frame to sit centrally in the tape, in between those two edges. And once you've done one, you kind of, you've got the knack for the second one. So just roll that round. And then... Again, leaving a little gap so you can see where your joins are, snipping that away and then rolling the tape around the ring. So we're just getting as much of that sticky as we can around there. There we go. So that's our two rings finished and we're now on to rolling up our shade. Just going to turn that around and we're going to be rolling towards the taped edge. So you need that furthest away from you. And at this point, this is where if we have a directional fabric, we need to think about what we want from it, whether we want it to be a table lamp like this one or whether we want it to be a pendant light that's hanging down from the ceiling. So this is a what's called a non-directional fabric. But if, say, this had flowers growing up it and you wanted to have a table lamp, you would need to position your utility ring at the bottom with your shade, PVC and fabric on top 
and then your plain ring on top of that. If you wanted it the other way round, you would simply swap those over by positioning your plain ring at the bottom, your PVC and your fabric on top, and then your utility ring with the utility section facing inwards, and that would then hang down from a ceiling. So it's just important to consider your fabric, what you're using and how that will be in the final shade. So we're going to be working towards this taped end here, as I said, and then I'm going to just position my rings on either side. I do this just to remind me what it is I'm making. With this fabric, it doesn't really matter because it can go either way around, but it's just a good habit to get into. Just going to remove the red backing from this one. And that means then I can just pop it on its utility section and it won't stick to the table. And then just finding my join here. And when you do this, just be careful that you're only lifting the backing and not lifting the tape up as well. There we go. So that's the backing off there. And now this is where those marks are going to come into play. So with one of these, I'm just going to literally position my mark right on to the short edge. And I'm positioning the ring a couple of millimetres in on the PVC. So this shouldn't be touching the fabric at this stage. It's just literally sitting on the PVC. And then I'm going to pick up my other one. I'm going to make sure the way I pick it up, I pick it up with the mark down because my other hand is already taken up on this side and do exactly the same. And you can now kind of lean them together and position. So the mark is right. I just want to get it near the edge. And what that means is that we're rolling these two shapes exactly the same. So now the fun begins and we just need to roll these along. Now, this is very forgiving, so if you do go wrong, you can pull it back. And we're just slowly but surely, not putting too much pressure on, we're just going to roll the rings. So there we go. You can see already the tape's doing its job. Here I've just come off a tiny little bit, so I'm just going to pull that into shape. There we go. And... I'm on an even keel now. So you can actually do this from the bottom, which sometimes gives you a little bit more control. There we go. And we're just rolling and rolling. And just keeping it all nice and even. That's looking really good. And I find it easy, you'll notice I'm doing this, bringing it towards my body, just because I can then get my hands in to a position where it's working for me. So just before you do the last section, you just need to flip that towards yourself and just gently lift this up and remove your backing tape. And what I like to do at this stage is I just like to make sure that my seams are flush along the side. So basically, where I'm joining the PVC, it all joins together really nicely. And we're just gently going to close that with the tips of our fingers. Don't push down on this section because you can really dint uh, the PVC. So it's no real pressure on here. And then if we just turn that over, we can take our seam roller and push along there, along that seam to make sure that's joined. If you don't have one of those, you can just put pressure on with your fingers, making sure that that's joined together really nicely. So it's starting to look much more like a lampshade now, which is great. Just remove those frays. There we go. And what we're going to do now is where our seam and our PVC and fabric has overlapped, we have an overlap of fabric here at the top and the bottom. So I just want to cut away this little square. So just going down vertically and then horizontally, just cutting that square away. 
So that means we're back to single fabric again and just repeating that from the top. So exactly the same, just fold that down, just cut in and remove that. There we go. So the next stage is to start to create this beautiful top line that we have here. This is the really professional finish, I think, on the shade that makes it look very much like it is from the high street and that you haven't made it yourself. So all we're going to do is just simply push with our fingers down and make sure that the fabric underneath is just tacking onto the sticky tape underneath. And then just exactly the same on the other side. So don't worry too much about the spokes now. Just simply push this down to get it into the right position, ready for the next stage. There we go. So we're all ready now to start finishing the shade. So I mentioned this at the beginning. This is our finishing tool. It has a point on the two long sides and then the serrated edge. I prefer to use the point, but you can use the longer sides as well or the serrated edge. You just need to work with it and find out what's best for you. So starting at the seam again, I'm simply going to take the tool and I'm just going to tuck the fabric underneath. And this is one of the reasons we didn't put too much pressure on earlier on, because that means that this will slide under quite easily. You do need to be a little bit firm with it. And once you get going, we're just literally pushing the margin underneath the frame. And if you have any loose frays, you can simply use the longer side to swish those in. There we go. And we're all the way back round to the beginning already. And I'm just going to make sure that there's no little frays just by quickly running that in. There we go. And we're all ready round to the other side. So before we start on this side, all I'm going to do, just on my spokes, and there's four of those, we're just going to... Simply lift up the fabric, put the scissors in line with the spoke and snip in. And that just creates a split. We're only cutting up to the bar where the frame is. We're not taking it all the way to the edge of the lampshade where the PVC is. And we're simply just going to push that down either side. So just repeat that on all four. Just push those down on either side. There we go. And we're going to do exactly the same with this. So again, I'm going to start at my seam, just taking my tool again and pushing underneath. And I'm just going to come from the spoke there. And just, I use the point to just get behind the back of the spoke to put that underneath. And you can hear that cracking sound and that's just the tape coming away from the PVC to then allow that to slide underneath. Just back behind the spokes again, just tucking the fabric behind there. And exactly the same again. So keep moving it round. And I think this gives it the finishing touch because this is the kind of thing that really doesn't make it look handmade. Let's finish this last section. Just get that finished off. 
and we're all done, which is brilliant. So as you can see there, a really gorgeous oval uh, lampshade that look fantastic on a table, uh, a, a table base, or alternatively as a pendant light. Um, gorgeous finished product in your choice of fabric. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed watching our demonstration. I hope we've inspired you to make um, lampshades either for yourself or for your friends, or maybe even to go on and start your own small business. So thank you for watching.